Well, I'm Jordan and I'm here with uh, Karen Richards. Karen came to visit us from uh, England, I guess, but you've been all across the United States. Mm -hmm. so, um, would you be okay just to tell a little bit about your story? About how, how you... Sure, what would you like to know specifically? Well, I think there's an awakening part, or a, so, so maybe the process you went through. Or, okay. Uh, Okay, there appeared to be um, an experiential recognition of uh, life as it really is, if we can describe it like that, okay. um, with no active spiritual seeking. Um, it just appeared to happen as a result of suffering, intense suffering. Life appeared not to be working and there was an inability to micromanage uh, life anymore. Every aspect of life was seeming to fail. I was a nurse working um, as a critical care nurse specialist and the job was very stressful. In addition to that there were managerial pressures, difficulties um, in terms of the way the organization was supporting me to do that uh, role and also a limited number of staff to do the job effectively. Other areas of, of life seem to be in disarray as well, personal relationships, family relationships, um, in addition to the pressures of daily living, running a home and maintaining a home as well, and everything that goes along with that. And so, working full time, trying to manage all those things was just unsustainable and health was beginning to suffer as a direct result of all those things. It was just an inability to manage and it seemed overwhelming and as a result of attempting to, to manage there was um, a health challenge that seemed to present itself that caused me to stop and as a result of that stopping, it seemed to create a space for the experiential recognition of life as it truly is. Was that in like a, a moment of recognition? Or? It appeared to be a moment of recognition where there was a time-bound recognition that opened up to the timeless nature of life. Okay. And you weren't looking for that? Not at all. I mean, I was at an unconscious level looking for that, but mm -hmm. I didn't realize that I was looking for that. I was just trying to find relief in whatever way I could. We're pleasure-seeking organisms, ultimately, I think. There is this drive for satisfaction. There is this drive for peace. There is this drive for, for pleasure and enjoyable experiences. And in that drive is really hidden a desire to recognize what we truly are beyond the form that we appear to experience. So is that what recognition means? Is, this, is that something different? Recognition really relates to the seeing through of the personal. So it is an apparent recognition. The idea of who you are seems to recognize something which is beyond who you are, mm -hmm. which is the true essence of who you are. So it's a bit of a paradox. There is the ultimate recognition, which really is about recognizing what's always here. So it doesn't happen to somebody. It happens in the absence of somebody. <laughs> it's like um, the idea of who you are gets completely out of the way and what is always here is recognized to be the case. So is that what happened with you from that experience of the illness? and? The it appeared that the illness created a stopping and in that stopping the idea of who I am seemed to get completely out of the way in order to recognize what is always the case, what never goes anywhere. 
this might seem silly, but did that happen like in the morning or in the after night or do you, is there a moment that you knew that it? With memory, I can recall it to be okay. an experience that happened in the evening. Okay. And did you know what was what it was then when it did happen? Well. Life was in such a disarray of suffering that I was speaking to a friend about this, what I perceived to be the state of my life. Mm -hmm. And he said that he had something he wanted me to listen to and that it would be a good idea if we spent some time going through what was happening and then if I could maybe be receptive to, to listening to something. And I had no idea what that was. So um, during the evening, he'd actually forgotten about what he'd asked me to, to look at. So I reminded him and he said, OK, well, let's, let's look at that. And he put on an interview by someone I now know to be John Wheeler, who's a non-dual teacher from the United States. And the interview was a radio show an hour long, which there were commercial breaks, and during the first 15 minutes, commercial break came on, and um, during that moment, I said to him, he's saying, we are awareness. And my friend said, yes, you are. And that phrase seemed to promote um, a recognition of the timelessness of reality. Okay. And so from that point on, then everything's been Beautiful and no problems? Did you get well, by the way? No, no, I... It's really just the beginning of abiding and surrendering to, to that timeless nature that we, we already are, that's always here. So I think there is an idea that life suddenly then becomes blissful. What is blissful is actually knowing that there is freedom no matter what experience is happening. And, and you're confident in that? Yes. Okay. Because the confidence comes through your voice as you talk about it. Yes. There is no doubt that that is the case. And so it's remembering to experientially recognize that ever more deeply in each and every moment. Recognize the... The timeless nature of true reality, shall we say. Okay. Life as it truly is. <clears throat> And so it's not even to say that I am the timeless nature of true reality. That wouldn't be correct, right? Or is well, that too picky with words? What does it relate to when we say I? Can we find an I? Can we find that timeless nature? You know, we know we're present and aware right now. Mm -hmm. There is an experience. And there is something that is knowing that experience. Can we find that which knows the experience? the experience of, of whatever is appearing here right now. Something knows that experience, but to say, I, can we find it in our direct experience? And yet it is. We cannot deny that we're present. We cannot deny that we're aware. But there is no graspable, locatable, identifiable, structure to that. So you, so we couldn't say that you found yourself. It's more like... I found the absence of myself. Okay. Okay. And that absence is that in which everything appears and dissolves. And, and then something becomes strongly committed to that, or strongly knowing of that, or... It's like the switching of allegiance to who we believe oh. ourselves to be, okay. to surrendering to what we know to be true, beyond experience, and yet is inseparable from experience. Okay, and, and what, I, what I believe I know from my experience is the switching of allegiance can't, isn't just a conscious wanting it. Or, desire for change. It's like the absence of desiring, almost. It's like the complete melting and acceptance to life as it is happening right now.
the personal desires fall away and there is just if there is any desire it's desiring life just as it is mm -hmm. and loving life just as it is and not wanting anything other than how things are so is it worthwhile to consciously try to not want desires well that's just another form of seeking okay relating to the idea you have about who you are that wants to try and do something perfectly mm -hmm. it wants to try and get to where you already are through thinking it understands right. how to get there when really that's just another form of trying to escape what's already here or trying to get what i think i want in a different way yes which is missing what is already here which is the timeless awareness. Yes, the timeless okay. nature. Okay. Stainless, pure nature of what is already here, which is always the case, which never goes anywhere. It's like when we relax into life, the relaxation that is natural is always present. Whenever we remember to recognize that oh, there is just this natural, effortless, awareness that we don't even have to try to get to because it's always the case it's like a stepping back into that without moving when the ideas subside even if ideas are arising there can be the recognition of those ideas as simply unlocatable experiences can we find an idea So really all the things that we've you know, learned to be true, whatever we've decided to be about ourselves, or isn't really what it is. Somehow we have to let go of that or unlearn that or... Well simply recognize that as an appearance. Simply recognize that there is something that recognizes that. Okay. something that isn't a thing that knows the experience of our having ideas okay. and whatever that is then is basically learning to recognize itself it's already recognized it's got it right because it okay. but there is the apparent experiential recognition of that which is already recognized Mm -hmm. and trusting that which is already recognized okay.